Good afternoon and welcome. And we're glad you're here to celebrate this occasion where Joel gets installed as a pastor at our church. We just have a few things that you probably hear at your own church, but we'll just kind of talk about that, this housekeeping things. We ask that you keep your mask on as much as you possibly can. If it's getting too sweaty and you're not talk, speaking out loud with us as a responsive part or, or listening to music and humming, you can, you can take it off to breathe a little bit, give yourself a little break. But we also are not going to sing the hymns. We, we, we ask our congregation in, in the morning service to hum along if they want. Sing in their heart. God certainly wants us to sing. He tells us to and he invented music. But we have someone singing to us and the verses are on the screen. And we hope that that'll be worshipful for you. Also, if you leave to go to the restroom, uh, we say if there's, there's three people, you know, in the restroom at a time. So just if you walk in and there's already three, you know, back out and wait for somebody to leave. And that, that way we could social distance that way. I, that's all I can think of. Otherwise, to enjoy the worship and, and uh, let your faith be built up. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we'll listen to our first hymn, Speak, O Lord.
I invite you to stand with me as we confess our sins and get forgiveness. Dear friends, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God, our Father, asking Him for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. And uh, there we go. One more slide. Lord of life. For faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Amen. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of the Lord through his called servant. I forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Our song before the sermon is, Make Me a Servant. Our first reading for your installation, Joel, is John chapter 15. Remember, Jesus is in the upper room. Disciples are with him. He's going to go to the cross the next day for us. And he's going to send them and all of us out to do his work. And he says, I am the life source. You're not. I'm the vine. You are the branches. Just remain in me and you will bear much fruit. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it may be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the gospel of our Lord. Our second reading is from Joshua chapter 1 as he takes over the leadership of Israel and Moses has gone to glory and God says, if you, I'm going to be with you wherever you go. And you just stay in my testimony and my word, and both of us will be fine. It's a great comfort for anyone who's a leader in God's church. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord, after, I'm sorry, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. 
I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. This is the word of our Lord. We're now ready for our song before the sermon, Hark the Voice of Jesus Crying. By the grace of God, we go. By the grace of God, we go because we know that the Lord is holding us in the palm of his hand. Amen. The word of God that Joel has chosen for his installation service today is from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine, 
Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. And this is God's word. Dear members of Holy Word Lutheran Church, and to you, my brothers in the ministry, and to you, the Fogels and the Herrings, Joel and Amanda, and Bobby. There are things in life that truly amaze us. Perhaps you're thinking of uh, amazing things that happen in nature, like this. Did you know that some cats are allergic to humans? Amazing, isn't it? Or maybe you're thinking of this. Did you know that 10% of the pictures that have been taken in the entire history of the world, go back to all those photos that you have of your grandpa and grandmas and your relatives, all the pictures in the whole history of picture taking, 10% of those pictures have been taken in the year 2020. Amazing. Yeah, not really. <laughs> not really. Uh, you know what's amazing? By the grace of God go we and that we're in the palm of his hand. Now that's amazing. And if I might just show you how amazing that is, I have four kids that are here today. The oldest is Jake. By the grace of God goes Jake, and Jake is an engineer, uh, 31 years old now, is, is that right? 31 years old. Man, does time fly. And uh, not just an engineer, but he's also highly involved with the youth group at Atonement Lutheran Church and, and connects with the youth group here, involved highly in the church. By the grace of God go we. Joel is here, having traveled what? I think this is your 10th move since you've been born. Your 10th move to finally come here, well, did I say finally? Uh, to end up in Austin. 10th uh, move, and I think the last five, Amanda's been with you. And, and amazing that he's here by the grace of God, in the palm of God's hand. And Jamie is working at a nurse at Baylor Hospital, by the grace of God, in the palm of his hand. Jenna. You always make me cry, Jenna. Because it's by the grace of God, in the palm of his hand, athletic trainer, highly involved in church, playing for services. You know what's really amazing? Is that it's the grace of God that's at work. It's the grace of God at work because of the power of God's word. The power of God's word. This is what Paul told Timothy to do. Preach the gospel, preach the word. Preach the word because we know it's Christ's passion. And preach the word because we know it's God's people. And so we preach that word. We preach it with passion. We preach it as Paul directed Timothy because we know exactly how powerful that word is. We know it was the word of God connected to a staff of Moses that split the Red Sea. We know it was the word of God connected to a promise that brought bread down from heaven in manna. We know it is the power of his word where Jesus says to the storms, be still. We know it's the power of God's word connected to the wafer and the wine to bring forgiveness of sins. We know the power of God's word. And so, Holy Word has called you here, Joel, to be their pastor through the assignment committee because they know the power of God's word and they know how important it is because of what Paul says. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who's going to judge the living and the dead in view of his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Do you see what's at stake What's at stake? He says, judgment day is coming. And the souls of people are at stake. 
The good people of Holy Word know the importance of proclaiming that powerful word to the souls of people that will face God. And we want everyone to be able to have confidence as we come before God to know we're in the, by the grace of God in the palm of his hand to stand before him because the word has done its work. And we know that the word does its work because of the passion of Christ who preached that word. And so, Joel, in a few short moments, you're going to be standing up here and you're going to make, again, a promise, as you did at your ordination here at your installation. You're going to promise to be a confessional Lutheran pastor. You are going to promise to be confessional because you believe that your teaching and your preaching must be based on the Lutheran confessions because they give a proper testimony to Scripture. You're going to give a promise to be faithful to the, the inerrant, infallible, the, the Word of God because you know that's the, that's the standard upon which your preaching and teaching will stand. You will make a promise, Joel. You will make a promise because you know the power of God's word in the lives of people. It's Christ's passion. It's Christ's passion as he wants that word to be proclaimed. And that comes in very practical ways. You'll probably experience that sooner or later if you haven't already. The passion of being a confessional Lutheran pastor. When the Sunday school teacher comes and says, Hey, pastor, I, gave, I found this great video I want to show to the kids. And would you look at it? Tell me what you think. And you watch it, and it ends with a great altar call. And now you're going to feel the passion of Christ. Because you promised to be a confessional Lutheran pastor. You're going to feel it when people want to bend the rules and, and talk a little bit funny in your ears when they talk about the, the role of men and women or racism or the way we deal with each other or the way that the world is going when it comes to marriage. And you're going to say, I'm a confessional Lutheran pastor. I promise to my God and to these good people at Holy Word to remain in Christ's passion, centered on his word. It becomes very practical for us in our day-to-day -day life with our families and with our friends to stand firmly on Christ's passion and the power of that word. The word that changes hearts. And, and Paul put it like this. He said, preach the word and be ready whether it's convenient or not. Uh, the word he used, that, that be ready. Think, think of the angels in heaven just standing at the throne of God, all excited. I'm ready. Today, God, can I go and share a message today? You know, politicians get that. Only they take that message and, and they kind of twist it and turn it to make it say what they wanted to say. Not you, Joel. No, you are a confessional Lutheran pastor in the passion of Christ to preach the true word of God because you know the power of God's word in the ears of God's people and on their hearts. The passion of Christ as he puts it, to correct, to rebuke, and encourage with all patience and teaching. Uh, to correct, to bring it to light, right? To show, oh, what's going on here? Let's just put God's light on it and, and see what's going on. To rebuke, that's a little bit stronger, huh? To hold up to the standard of God's word. But then to encourage with, with patience and with teaching. Joel, you're a good teacher. You have learned the difference between what it means to be a teacher and an educator. I'll give you an example. Uh, I heard this story uh, about a janitor that was having a really hard time at school because they had a mirror in the girls' bathroom. And the janitor would go in there, and on the mirror, every time he went in there, there were lipstick marks of girls that were kissing the mirror. Can you see it? putting on their lipstick and putting a big kiss on their mirror. See, I can even see if any girls have lipstick on with those masks on today. And the janitor's beside himself. And so he went to the principal and he said, I don't know what to do. Every time I go in there, there's lipstick on the mirror. And the principal says, well, I'm going to teach you the difference between being a teacher and being an educator. 
So he said, girls, I want you all to come into the girls' restroom at the 10 o'clock break. So all the girls are in the restroom at the 10 o'clock break. And the principal said, girls, you're not going to kiss the mirror anymore, are you? And they were all snickering. (laughs) And then the principal said to the janitor, okay, clean it for the last time. And he went into the stall, took the toilet brush, dipped it in, and wiped the mirror clean. The power of God's word is to lead people to discover the passion of Christ. If we have preaching without Christ, if we have Bible information class without Christ, if we have Bible class without Christ, if we have witnessing without Christ, we have a world without God. And so we come in the power of Christ's passion in the preaching of his word so that his people might be blessed. And these are Christ's people. I know it's going to be difficult, Joel, to come to a new congregation and to get to know people. (laughs) Know every member visits. People walking through the door and you get to see their eyes and that's it. And to try to learn the names of everybody and figure out who's who. Well, I got some good news for you. You don't have to make every member visits because you already know these people. You already know that they received a sinful nature. And you already know that they have rebellion against God. And you already know that the sins of their life are going to fill your heart and fill your head. And it's going to cause you to love God's people. Because you know the power of the word. This is what Paul said. He said, For there will come a time when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Yeah, so then we have to come with God's word. We have to come with the story of God. And let people know God is serious about sin. He's so serious about sin that he made clear in his word what rebellion against the forgiveness of Jesus leads to. But you got a story to tell. You got a story to tell of God's love. A story to tell of God that so loved the world to send his one and only son and to point God's people to Christ. It becomes very practical, Joel. Uh, just recently during this COVID thing, the phone rang. I picked it up. It was someone from hospice. And they said, uh, yeah, this is, this is hospice and we're taking care of this man. And uh, his name's Bob Wilson. Uh, he's a, a vet from Vietnam. And uh, he's dying. And he's, he asked if we could find a Lutheran pastor to come and visit him. Well, let's see. Do I have time today to go see a dying man? Uh, yeah. So I went over there, and I didn't have to make a member visit to him. I didn't have to ask Bob, oh, so what is your background, Bob? I knew already. Infected by sin, his own sinful nature, the sins of his life, which is a divorced man and remarried and the extended families there, and they're all talking, and they're a mess. So I'm thinking, why did Bob, one a Lutheran pastor, grew up in Wyoming, went to the Lutheran church? And I'm thinking to myself, Bob wants to hear it one last time. So we talked. Bob knew there was nothing he could do. Nothing he could do, nothing he should do. And this is the passage I used. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it's a gift of God, not by works. I looked at Bob and I said, well, he said, is that it? Yep, that's it. And he was so thankful to hear he's forgiven. Now, from his reaction, I am confident, and from his words, I'm even more confident that Bob's in heaven with Jesus. He's one of Christ's people. 
And now there's a whole congregation here of Christ's people. But Joel, how blessed you are that you have a congregation that's so well trained. You have a congregation that understands the means of grace. You have a congregation that understands the power of God's word for Christ's people. And you get to bring them the continued encouragement of that word of God. And yet we know what Paul said, look out, because we know these people. And Paul didn't say, if by chance one day they might, this is what he said. For there will come a time when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, because they have itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in line with their own desires. They also turn their ears away from the truth and will turn aside to myths. You see, Joel, while you're here serving God's faithful people, they are also being attacked by Satan on the other side. And history will repeat itself, because Paul said it will. Oh, it may not be just as crass as them complaining about your orthodoxy or, or scrutinizing your preaching, at least not to your face. But on the way home in the car, they'll say something like this. You know, I, I just don't feel like my soul's being fed anymore. Or they might say something like this. You know, I wish our church would talk more, and you know, a little more about some relative topics that would really hit home for me better. And God forbid, they go to other pastures to graze on grasses that are filled with stickers and choke. And so you're called here by the grace of God to proclaim the power of God to God's people, to Christ's people. And you will rest secure in the amazing work that the gospel does. I know, Joel, that you could probably call on at least 10 homes in this neighborhood in a week. And, and Pastor Patterson could probably call on 10 more homes. And, and I'm sure the staff minister, I'm sure Chad, why, uh, Chad, you could call on 10 more homes. That's 30 homes between the three of you in a week. And in a year's time, let's do easy math, 50 weeks, you're going to call on 1,500 homes with the power of the gospel. Woohoo! That's pathetic. Because you have a partnership in the gospel with the members of Holy Word. And in this zip code, if you have three full-time workers making 10 calls a week, I looked it up, it's going to take you 13 years to knock on all the doors in this zip code. And so the partner of Holy Word congregation is vital. It's vital because I know you believe when you come here, you are hearing the powerful word of God being proclaimed from God's pastors. Partnership with them wholeheartedly with the passion of Christ for the sake of Christ's people so that many more, so that many more can rest secure in the palm of God's hand because of the power of his word. And all of God's people said, amen. Please stand. Lord, we know there's some really amazing things out there. Uh, it's amazing that if I make $20,000, I'm in the top 10% of the wealthiest people in the world. Lord, I know there's some amazing things out there. There's Navy ships that are more than three times the length of football fields, and yet they float. Amazing. No, Lord. We know it's really amazing. The power of your word to be proclaimed. And in the power of that word being proclaimed, many more people might hear, believe, and be saved. You be the glory. Amen. Amen. Continue with the installation. The congregation may be seated. I'll invite the pastors up. Thank you, John. Yeah.
You know where to go. Okay. Okay. Don't kneel yet, my son. <laughs> His son. <laughs> Joel Herring, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, said before he ascended into heaven, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Holy Scripture assures us that our risen and ascended Lord will always provide for his church the gifts necessary to carry out his mission. When Paul wrote in Ephesians 4, he's ascended to heaven and then has given us pastors, teachers, evangelists. Dear brother in Christ, this congregation has called you to serve in the office of the holy ministry. It is good that you should hear again what God in his word impresses on pastors concerning this office. St. Paul states that a pastor must be above reproach. The husband of but one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not, but gentle, not quarrelsome, and not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. Paul urged Timothy to... Quote, set an example for the believers in speech and in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. The further, and further, he advised him, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching, and to teaching. Watch your life and your doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. In the final chapter of his second letter to Timothy, the Apostle Paul said, preach the word. Your dad just preached this to you. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. As a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and an ambassador, commissioned by him to preach the word and administer the sacraments, our ascended Lord has given you as a gift to the body of Christ, his church. And he has appointed you to love and to serve his bride. You are called to offer prayers and intercessions for his people. To feed and instruct, to watch over and guide the sheep and the lambs of God's flock. Remembering that Christ has bought each one of them with his own blood. You are also called to protect the flock from savage wolves who, as the scriptures will say, will try to scatter the flock. For such a ministry, you will gladly seek the strength which Christ provides, devoting yourself to meditation and study of the scriptures. Only by being nourished in the truths of the faith will you be able to carry out the duties of this office and set an example in godliness and Christian living. The ability to carry out this calling is not in us, Joel, but it comes from alone from God. St. Paul reminded the Corinthians it's not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but the competence comes from God through Christ. In keeping with the word, now, we will ask you questions at your installation, similar to what you were asked two years ago at your ordination. Are you fully determined to carry out this work according to the grace which God has given you? If so, say, I am. I am. Do you believe that the 66 books of the Old and New Testaments are the inspired Word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and in, in, in practice, if so say I do. I do. Do you accept the three creeds, the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian Creed as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Scriptures? And do you reject all the errors that they condemn? If, I do. Do you believe that the unaltered Augsburg Confession is a true exposition of the Word of God and a correct presentation of the doctrine of the Lutheran Church, and that the confessions in the Book of Concord are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith. They are the Apology of the Augsburg Confession, 
the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small called articles, and the formula of Concord? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you solemnly promise that all your teaching and your administration of the sacraments will conform to the Holy Scriptures and the doctrines of the Lutheran confessions? If so, say, I do. I do. Will you give faithful witness to Christ in the world that God's love may be known in all that you do and say? If so, say, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, will graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. I now have an exhortation to the members of Holy Word. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you have heard Joel's solemn promise given to you as the one called to be your pastor. I urge you, therefore, to receive him as your pastor and to keep in mind always some passages from the Word of God that I read to you of what God expects of us, his flock. Here they go. Listen eagerly to the preaching of the Word, receiving it not as the Word of men, but as it actually is, the Word of God. Take to heart his scriptural words of warning and encouragement, humbly accepting the Word planted in you. Work together with him for our Lord's kingdom so that by your works of service, the body of Christ might be built up, Ephesians 4. Help him by your word and example in teaching the young, remembering how the scriptures urge you to bring up your children in the training and instruction of the Lord. Honor and love him, as the Apostle Paul says, quote, respect those who work hard among you and who are over you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Pray for him continually that his ministry among you may be greatly blessed and that with all his responsibilities he may continue to have a cheerful spirit. Provide also for his physical needs, for the Lord says the worker deserves his wages. And the Apostle Paul says anyone who receives instruction in the word, must also share in all good things with his teacher. Finally, remember what the scriptures say, quote, Obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account to God. Obey them so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no advantage to you. I now ask you, members of Holy Word, in the presence of God and of your pastor, Joel Herring, are you willing to receive him as a minister of God? Will you show him the love, honor, and obedience in the Lord that the Lord asks for, that you owe a shepherd and overseer, placed over you by the Lord Jesus, the chief shepherd and overseer of souls? If so, answer, we will, and we ask God to help us. The Almighty and merciful God strengthen and assist you always, you pastor and also you members of Holy Word. Ready for you to kneel. Joel Herring, I install you as pastor at Holy Word Lutheran Church. May the God who has promised that he has equipped you with his means of grace, word and sacraments, give you strength in your heart to always do this with confidence and with a cheerful heart. Welcome to the ministry. We're ready for you. That's fine. Go ahead. As these brothers in the ministry come forward, they're going to share a Bible verse and encouragement. We usually lay hands, but because of COVID, we'll share our, stay our distance. But please identify where you serve and what your name is as you come forward. Welcome, Joel. I'm Mike Geiger. I serve uh, north of here at Georgetown at Cross and Crown Lutheran Church. And on behalf of the brothers and sisters there, welcome to our our circuit, our district, and our ministry area of the greater Austin area. As I think of of passages that have encouraged me and guided me in scripture, I think of the end of Matthew 9. And while we rejoice that Jesus is our savior, he's also instructive and it's great to have insights into his activity, his heart, and his prayer life. And at the end of Matthew chapter 9, Matthew records that for us as he observed it as one of his followers, where Jesus went through the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news and healing of all their sicknesses and diseases. I don't know if God's given you the gift of healing, but I know he's giving you a heart to rightly teach the word of truth, to proclaim the good news as your father encouraged, 
and to show love to the people in need. And then Jesus looked around, the crowds came to him, and he, his heart had compassion on them because they were as sheep without a shepherd, harassed and helpless. May you have that same heart as you interact with people, that you see and have compassion on them needing a shepherd. And then he prays, he looks at those crowds, and he turns to his disciples and says, let's pray. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the harvest field because the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And then chapter 10 begins by him calling his disciples. So as Jesus prays, you are an answer to the prayer that we have in the Austin area. And may God send you with the same commission that Jesus sent his disciples with the authority that he has. All authority is in heaven and earth has been given to him. Therefore, Joel, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And know that Jesus is with you to the very end of the age. Welcome and God bless your ministry. Pastor Tim Sukup from Abiding Savior in Colleen, Texas. Our entire family welcomes you. We want you to know that we love you very dearly. Uh, you as well, Amanda and Bobby, Gretchen and I are praying for you every morning, and we love you, and you owe me 10 hugs, because <laughs> I like to hug, and, and I wanted to very badly give you a hug. God gives you two, two promises and, and f five, command, five pillars of fearlessness and two commands in Isaiah 41.10, and God bless you in your ministry as you live in the good of these promises and carry out his command with Christ's passion. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God bless you, Joel. God bless you, Amanda and Bobby. We're praying for you, and we love you. I'm Stephen Apt, pastor at Divine Savior Church in Liberty Hill. Good to be with you today, Joel. Amanda, you too. And I'm so happy to meet Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Uh, as you preach Christ's passion, the gospel, to Christ's people, do so with the words of Paul, and I hope you're encouraged by them, to young Timothy. In 2 Timothy 1.7, he says, God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. God bless, Joel. Hi, Joel. Darren Lindemann, pastor at Cross Life Church in Pflugerville. Welcome to you and Amanda and Bobby, too, and welcome to the Capitol Circuit. There's, there's some of those verses that you just need, like, every day, like a verse for when you get out of bed and you put your feet on the floor. Here's one of those. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 118, 24. Hi, Joel. My name is Nathan Biebert. I bring you greetings on behalf of Risen Savior Lutheran in South Austin, you and your family. I pray that the words of Psalm 119, verses 12 and 13, would be both your prayer and that one day as you look back on however many days God gives you, they would also be your autobiography, where the psalmist says, Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my mouth, I have recounted all the decrees of your mouth. God bless you. I'm Ben Schoen. I serve as a pastor at Abiding Word Lutheran Church in Houston, Texas. Uh, Joel and Amanda, it's good to see you again. We were classmates at Martin Luther College. We are young in our ministry still, you and I together. And we don't always know why things happen, uh, but we know what happens. Uh, or what the message is as your father preached it to you. So take encouragement from these words of Deuteronomy 29:29. 29, 29. The secret things belong to the Lord, but the things revealed belong to us and our children forever. God's blessings, Joel. Hi, Joel. My name is Dan Leitinen, Wells World Missions, Multilanguage Productions. My prayer for you and for your family, Amanda and Bobby as well, is that God give you a full measure of his spirit, like he's given you a full measure of his love in Christ Jesus, your savior. The apostle Paul says, for Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for acts of service so that the body of Christ may be built up, Ephesians 4. 
Welcome. Dave Schneider, Cross of Christ, Universal City, on behalf of our brothers and sisters at Cross of Christ and also the brothers in the Alamo Circuit, welcome Joel and Amanda and Bobby. Our prayer for you is the same as the prayer at the end of Hebrews chapter 13. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in you what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ. To him be glory forever and ever. Welcome and God bless. Joel, I've already said a lot. <laughs> Let me sum it up like this. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Preach the word, whether it's convenient or not. Correct and rebuke. And then with great patience teach God's people. I love you as a son and as a brother in the ministry. Let's all bow our heads in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the chief shepherd and the only head of the church. We pray that you will keep Joel as your faithful servant in his study of the word and keep him faithful in proclamation of its saving truth. Give him the strength to carry out the duties of his ministry. Bless his labors in your service, that your holy name may be glorified, and that your kingdom may increase. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go now and do the work of the Lord, and he will bless you with his Holy Spirit. So do it with peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We'll close with the final hymn.
Thank you all for being here today. Uh, it means so much to me to have this support at my installation. There's a few people. I, thank you to Holy Word, the members. Um, you made me and my family feel so welcomed. And thank you to the musicians who played and those who prepared the food. Thank you, brothers, for coming uh, and supporting me and sharing with me God's Word. Uh, thank you to my family um, for coming up or coming down here all the way. It means so much. And thank you to you, Amanda. Um, I would not be able to do uh, the work that I do and what I'm going to be doing without your support, without all of your support. So um, I, I'm very gr thankful to my gracious God for giving me all of you into my life to give me the support that I need to do the work that he has called me to do. So thank you so much. And I believe Pastor has some announcements. Yeah. So, uh, again, brothers in the ministry, after a, a day of work in the kingdom and getting ready for your Sunday morning, you took the drive and came over here to be with us and to share scripture from your heart and God's heart. And it means the world to us and all of the rest of you that came to, to worship. We have a meal for you. Uh, you know, usually you have a big banquet. You sit down and there's a whole lot of visiting. But because of COVID... We're going to try to subdue that quite a bit, but we have food for you, and it's a, it's a box lunch. You can get ham or turkey, and it's, maybe there's another choice, but they're in there on the table in the fellowship hall. And what we'd like to do in just a minute is we're going to have the pastors come up for a picture. Now, June, I understand you're going to take pictures, but anybody else that wants to jump up and can do that because church is over, and that's just fine. So, so but, but we're going to take one with the masks because this is a historical time in and then one without. And uh, then what we'll do is we'll let the pastors file out. And then we'll, we'll let the family file out the first two pews. But then we'll go from the back. And that's just, again, about trying to keep social distancing and allow for people not passing by each other, except we've got these guys passing by. Because these germs are holy up here. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. I was, maybe I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have called an audible is what happened. So... <laughs> Anyway, uh, you're free to stay in there for, for, to eat your lunch, but we didn't set up tables again, so we wouldn't be responsible for you facing each other while you're eating. But, but, but also, if you'd stay just briefly, we're going to come in there as a congregation, say a couple of words to Joel, and, and, and give him a present. And if you want to stay for that, we'd love for you to do that, okay? So with that, you can play music while we take pictures. It's okay, but you don't have to, uh, Debbie, if you'd like. So pastors, if you would come up. And uh, we'll get our picture. Uh, while they're coming up, uh, I'll just wait for them to get up. I want to say a, a prayer for, for dinner. So, but let's, let's get on the wood right here. Maybe the, the tall guys in the back and then in the carpet, the shorter guys like me. So. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you for this food and the company that has produced it for us. And bless it as it nourishes our bodies and keep us safe on our travel home. Amen. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, one with masks. I got to get my mask on. Left over right. Smile. You can get closer, Denise. Just a second. <laughs> All right, guys, feel free to. Do you want, you want just, just the fit?
Now just Joel and his uh, family. Yeah, it's fine. Hey, feel free to start uh, exiting from the back if you would like, if you'd like to. Yeah, she's really good. No, you're good. <laughs> I kind of just got trapped here. So. <laughs> 